So describe just kind of the thumbnail sketch overview of what the broadband initiative is. Well, the Fond du Lac Band applied uh, for the uh, Blandon Broadband Community Initiative, and, uh, and they were accepted. And what that means is that for the next two years, uh, we have the ability to apply for up to $100,000 in grants to, from Blandon to support broadband projects uh, in our community. So at this point, what we're doing is we're asking for some community input. What do community members want to see uh, developed for this broadband initiative? Uh, we have been creating some pretty substantial in infrastructure with fiber optic cabling already, which is independent of this, uh, you know, this initiative. But uh, now we have the opportunity to to really enhance some things with uh, with a little bit more funding from the from the uh, Blandon uh, broadband community. And how much was it again? It's a hundred thousand dollars, and we have two years to be able to. Uh, to uh, develop ideas and and propose them, uh, submit those ideas and fund those as projects. How many years? Two years. Okay. So the time is uh, a factor in terms of getting the input and getting things up and going and getting things on the ground um, moving forward. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, with two years to work, we need to get get going right away to kind of gather some information from the community on, you know, what people would like to see. Now, I've got a couple more questions for you about the initiative and just kind of the, the I don't know what you call it, the digital background of uh, Fond du Lac Reservation. But one of the things that I wonder or that I hear about, and, I, you know, and, and I come here as just sort of a community guy, early child. You know, I'm a toy maker over at the early childhood program. And so there's a lot of stuff that I don't totally understand. I sort of understand it, but I don't completely understand it. And one of those things is this term, you know, I'm using air quotes, broadband. I mean, what does that mean? Well, broadband simply means that, uh, that we are able to squeeze more data through the data pipe. In other words, when, when uh, the Fond du Lac band moves to uh, broadband technology, we basically have a bigger pipe that we can uh, download and upload uh, information to the Internet or uh, to other data sources uh, more quickly, uh, more of it faster. It's like... Um PVC pipe at uh, L&M, and it's like a six-inch pipe versus a three-inch pipe, or something like that. Exactly. That's that's right. And so as we as we increase the size of that pipe, and I'm speaking figuratively, of course, of course yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're able to uh, to provide more services. There's more connectivity with the world. More users can get online and connected, and and be able to access information. Yeah. Why does why do you think Blandon cares about Fond du Lac Reservation. You know, I can't. I can't really give you a great deal of insight into that. I can tell you that uh, you know that that the Blandon Foundation is uh, you know has a history of of uh, you know benevolent activity. But uh, beyond that, uh, I can't really say. They have uh, set this structure up though, and uh, and allowed. Uh, agencies and groups such as the Fond du Lac Band to be able to apply to become Blandon Broadband Communities, and we were accepted. Yeah. Now, we did some research, uh, again, in my other role as an educator, um, into the quote-unquote digital divide. And the, one of the stories is, is that there's a rural-urban divide, and because much of Native America or Indian country is in these rural areas, and I mean, and, and you know, if you just look at our res, it goes from, you know, pretty much in t kind of by town, down by the, you know, by the, by the grass and gas and grocery store to places in Brookston and Sawyer where, I mean, it's rural. You're, you're isolated out there. But um, one of the things that we found is that our kids are moving into a K-12 school system. This is from the early childhood educator in me. They're moving into a K-12 school system where they're going to be, I don't know if behind is the word you use, and you know if you think about things traditionally, but they're, 
there are kids that have had much more access to this kind of technology than some of our kids, and that's one of the things that they refer to as the digital divide. Yeah, that is that is certainly true, JP. And uh, you know, while uh, you know the school, uh, our Ojibwe school here is is doing quite a bit with the, with the resources they have. Uh, the fact is, when the kids go home, they often don't have access to comparable resources. Uh, you know, you mentioned that that urban urban rural divide, and you know that is well illustrated uh, for us in our community here. Uh, if you live on the very edge of Cloquet, you have uh, quite a, an array of choices in terms of how you might be able to connect to, to the Internet or, or access other information technologies. If you uh, live a little farther away at all, anywhere out on the reservation, uh, probably your choice for Internet connectivity, as an example, is simply dial-up or satellite. Uh, so, and both of those really can hamstring a child uh, in terms of their ability to access information that they need quickly and, and effectively. Uh, so, you know, this is really going to uh, bring a grassroots component to, uh, to access to information. And, you know, I was just realizing this is, uh, this is near and dear to us because, you know, our signal... Timothy, as you probably know, is going out to our to the tower, which is on Fond du Lac Reservation, and it's using copper wire. We're using copper wire, and that affects the. I mean, that affects the sound of my, your your voice and my voice right now. But there's other technology that exists, and and not necessarily through fiber or whatever. But to to harness that stuff, I think, will make a difference in in what everyone's doing. You know. Well, I'm sure that, uh, you know, whatever, uh, whatever the initiatives the community comes up with, uh, it's, you know, they're going to be significant improvements uh, on, you know, on what we are currently experiencing. Just want to throw in at this point that uh, one, of the, one of the basic uh, mm -hmm. benefits of, uh, of being one of the Blandon broadband communities is that uh, the reservation will receive uh, 50 refurbished computers uh, from Blandon, uh, just sort of as a, you know, as a game opener, I guess. Mm -hmm. And 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 then we go from there. We there is an upcoming meeting on Monday evening that we'll, we should talk about, uh, where it, that is open to the community uh, to gather ideas from the community in uh, for how we should use uh, these resources. What can we do? Uh, in our community to improve connectivity and uh, and get people online and greater access to information. So, so can it, can someone, uh, a high school kid, or uh, I just had some some students in here that wanted to you know work on music, traditional music, and um, could they or could one of our elders that wants to be you know has an idea about technology uh, could could they come to this meeting and say. This is some stuff I'm thinking about. Is this something we can that can be included in this, or are there a set of you know three or four options that they choose from? Absolutely, they can they can attend, and their input is crucial to uh, this uh, entire initiative moving forward. Uh, we are looking uh, for people um, with you know some geographic diversity across our community, as well as generational diversity across our community, and uh, the meeting is uh, at the Fond du Lac Tribal Center Elderly, Elderly Nutrition mm -hmm. Program, the ENP, uh, this coming Monday, March 11th from 6 to 9 p.m. It's open to community members, uh, open to the public, and, uh, and there will be time to discuss what people would like to see happen uh, with this initiative. And are they, uh, does that include... Uh non-native people that may have a connection to the reservation as well? Absolutely. You know, it's uh, the Blandon broadband community is is uh, self-defined, I guess. If you consider yourself a part of this community, then you are welcome uh, to come to the meeting and uh, provide input. Yeah. So, Timothy, thank you so much for coming in and talking about this. Can you just give those, just kind of outline those bullet points of, of where it is and where to go and who should come? Yeah, Again. absolutely. The the Blandon Broadband Community Meeting, Monday, March 11th, uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. at the uh, Fond du Lac Tribal Center, ENP, open to the public. Oh, one more thing. 
uh, putting you on the spot here, but say somebody can't go or say we got to shut in or something, can they, could they call you or could they send you an email with their, with input or how, how would that be, how would that, that be handled? Um, they should be able to do that. And uh, I can perhaps provide you with a little bit of information if I dig on that. Okay, go ahead. But there is already a steering committee in place and I'm sure that, uh, that anyone contacting those uh, steering committee members will be, you know, met with quite a bit of enthusiasm and uh, your input will be valued. And if you would like, I can give you a list of who those community members are. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, you, would you like that now on the air? Yeah, no, go, uh, let, me, let me see the list. Okay, all right. And we, it's actually comprised of, uh, of students, uh, teachers, and uh, educational staff, uh, community leaders and IT leaders in our community. So there are, you know, it's it's quite a nice diverse group. They are charged with uh, sort of framing the direction that this goes, but uh, they are extremely open to uh, to your input. Well, just talking about diversity, what I want to do is I want to leave the student names off here. So I think I got this. So we've got Jeff Savage and Jim Northrup Sr., um, Roberta Welper, um, and then Charles Hilliard here at the school, who's a really kind of does doing some really genius stuff with uh, the community. And then did I say Jason Holliday? Those are those are some of them. And then there's a few students that are involved as well. And then, uh, and what about MIS? What about from your division? Yeah, we've got a couple of people from the MIS division. Uh, Fred Underwood, who is the MIS division director, is uh, is on the steering committee, as uh, as well as uh, Vicki Krisick, uh, who is also a, a staff member in the mm-hmm. MIS division. Yeah. Well, this, okay, and I just, I got to say this again. Now, we, uh, several years ago, different community groups, and I was doing this in uh, the Twin Ports area, we were working on this Google Fiber initiative, and and uh, people were doing web videos and jumping into Lake Superior and swimming with sharks and stuff like that. And I know this is a little bit different, but basically, this is a massive opportunity. This is a huge, rare opportunity that Fond du Lac has that uh, many communities would be, you know, desperate to have this opportunity. Am, am I overstating that? No, you're not over- overstating it at all. You know, uh, if, uh, you know, if you've got an idea about, uh, about how this, uh, this resource should be used, then you definitely want to want to bring that, uh, you know, to the attention of the steering committee. And the best way to do that will be at the meeting this coming Monday. Yeah. Thank you so much, Timothy. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. Absolutely. My pre- pleasure, JP. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you're listening to uh, 8.1 FM, WGZS. We are radio voice of uh, Nagachi Wanong and Anishinaabe.